Good morning, class. In this video, we will be covering 8.5 probability using the counting principle involving permutations and combinations. There are 12 problems in this um, section. So with number one, it says Larry, Eduardo, Ian, Sarah, and Simone have all been invited to a dinner party. They arrive randomly and each person arrives at a different time. A, in how many ways can they arrive? B, in how many ways can Larry arrive first and Simone last? C, the probability that Larry will arrive first and Simone will, and Simone last. So what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out whether or not order matters here. And since it says that they each arrive at different times, then the order does matter. And we're trying to figure out the order in which they arrive. So um, we are going to be using permutations. So there are one, two, three, four, five people. And we're going to pick all five of those people. Uh, we just don't know what order they're going to go in. So when you type in the calculator 5P5, you get 120. So that's how many different ways that they can arrive. Now, in how many ways can Larry arrive first and Simone last? That means Larry is first. There's only one possibility for first. For second, or and Simone is last. There's only one possibility for Simone being last. But for the other three people last uh, coming in between, here you have three people left to choose from. Once a person is selected, now you only have two people left to choose from. And once that second person is selected, then that last leftover person will go before Simone, okay? And so when you multiply all of these together, you get six. So how many ways can Larry arrive first and Simone last? It's six different ways. And then if you want to find the probability that Larry will arrive first and Simone last, you take the number of um, desired outcomes, which is Larry arriving first and Simone arriving last. That's the number of ways that that can happen over the total number of ways that it can the outcomes can happen. And so when you reduce this fraction, it reduces down to one over 20. And so that is the probability for part C. So for number two, it says six stand-up comics, A, B, C, D, E, and F, are to perform on a single evening at a comedy club. The order of performance is determined by a random selection. Find the probability that A, comic D will perform fifth, B, comic C will perform fifth, and comic B will perform first. I'm sorry, that was B. C, the comedians will perform in the following order, D, C, B, A, F, E, and D, comic F or comic E will perform third. So um, this is how we broke it down. So to find the total number of possibilities, which will basically be the denominator for each of the probabilities, um, we're going to take these one, two, three, four, five, six comics, and we're going to pick all six. We just have to figure out what order they go in. So it's six, permutation six, and in the calculator we get 720 total possibilities, right? Now, of each specific event, let's see how many possibilities we have for those. So for part A, comic D will perform fifth. So I put five blank or six blanks, one, two, three, four, five, six. And since I know comic D will perform fifth, there's only one possibility for that outcome. Um, but I didn't have any other information about the others. So if one comic is out, I still have five left. So I have five options to choose from for one position, then four options left for the next position, then three options for the third position, only two options for the fourth position, fifth has already been chosen, and then I only have one last option for the sixth position. So if I multiply all of this, I get 120. So the probability that comic D will perform fifth is 120 over 720, and that reduces down to one sixth. 
Now for part B, it says comic C will perform fifth and comic B will perform first. So I placed B in the first spot and C in the fifth spot. And so there's only one possible outcome because I know that those particular comics are gonna perform in those particular spots. So we have these other four spots remaining. So I only have four comics left to choose from for the second position, three comics to choose from for the third position, two comics to choose from from the fourth position, and then one comic left over to perform last. I multiplied all of these together and I got 24. So 24 over the total 720 reduces down to 130. Now for part C, part C says, the comedians will perform in the following order, D, C, B, A, F, E. Well, those are all specific positions. So it's one times one times one times one times one times one, which is just one over the total 720 possibilities. So for part C, the probability is just one over 720. For part D, it says the comic F or comic E will perform third. So I looked at what would happen with just one of them. And I took E first just because E was first in the alphabet. Um, so if E is going to perform third, then that leaves me with five possibilities for first, four for second, three for fourth, two for fifth, and then the last one for sixth position. So that gives me 120 possibilities for E. It would be the same thing for F because it says E or F, right? So if I've got 120 possibilities for E to be there and 120 possibilities for F to be third, then together that means I have 240 possibilities that E or F will be third. And when I reduce 240 over 720, we end up getting one third. Now for number three. It says a group consists of seven men and five women. Three people are selected to attend a conference. In how many ways can three people be selected from this group of 12? In how many ways can three women be selected from the five women? Find the probability that the selected group will consist of all women. So here we go. The number of ways to select three people from the group of 12 and it doesn't matter the order because they're just selected to go to a conference. It's not like someone's got to be in a certain uh, position or duty on this conference, okay? So the order does not matter, so we're going to be using combinations. So for out of 12 people, if we're choosing three, when I type this in the calculator, I get 220 possibilities. For, number, for part B, it says the number of ways to select three women from the group of five women would be five choose three. And in the calculator, it told me it was 10. So what is the probability that all the people selected will be women? It will be 10 out of the 220 total. And that reduces down to one over 22. Now for number four, it says, In one lottery, a player wins the jackpot by matching all five distinct numbers drawn in any order. So it says in any order, which means we use combinations. Um, from the white balls, one through 43, and matching the number on the gold ball, one through 33. If one ticket is purchased, what is the probability of winning the jackpot? Well, since one ticket is pur purchased, that's the one outcome that you have, um, but out of how many total outcomes? So we did 43 choose five balls and 33 choose the one gold ball. So we multiply these together and I typed the whole thing in the calculator and it gave me this large number. So my probability is going to be one over that very large number. And that doesn't reduce since the numerator is one. Moving on to number five. It says, in a lottery, the top cash prize was 659 million, going to three lucky winners. Players pick five different numbers from one to 52 and one number from one to 46. 
a player wins a minimum award of $250 by correctly matching two numbers drawn from the white balls, one through 50, 52, and matching the number on the gold ball, one through 46. What is the probability of winning the minimum award? So this one's a little interesting. We are gonna do the denominator a lot like the way we did um, the previous denominator where we take 52 um, possibilities for the white ball, but we're picking five and 46 possibilities for the gold ball, but we're choosing one. But then for the numerator, it has to be this specific information. It has to be two numbers drawn from the white balls and then one from the gold ball, okay? So basically what we're doing is we have to choose um, from the five winning balls, we have to choose at least two. And then if I take 52 minus the five winning balls, that gives me 47 non-winning balls. White balls, okay? So of the 47, we're gonna choose three of those because remember when you buy the lottery ticket, you get five numbers, right? Um, but two of them need to come from the five winning white balls and the other three will come from the 47 non-winning white balls. Then I also need to match the golden um, ball. So there's only one golden ball and I have to match it. There are 46 other, right? And there actually is not 46 because the one we took out, right? The gold ball is one of those 46. So it's actually 45 that are non-winning gold balls and you don't get any of those. You did not pick a single one, okay? Because remember, we're trying to find the probability that you win the 250, which means you did choose a gold ball, okay? Um, and it, I noticed that when I tried to type this whole thing in the calculator, um, it just kept giving me a decimal, okay? So it gives me a decimal. Um, so then what I did was, is I just did the numerator and the denominator individually and then tried to reduce it myself. Okay, so when I typed in this numerator, and notice it doesn't matter whether it was 46 choose zero or 45 choose zero, they're still both the same number. So even though I made that change, it's not going to affect this. Okay, but if you type this whole thing in a calculator, you do get this number. If you type this whole thing in a calculator, you do get that number. Okay, and so I noticed that they both ended in zero. So the first thing I did was reduce them both by 10. And I got down to this fraction. Then I noticed that, uh, then I go through my numbers and I try to figure out what other numbers go in there. Since they both don't end in five or zero, it's not five. Since they both do not end in even numbers, I cannot use two, so I tried three. And when I tried to divide this by three, I got a nice number, no decimal. And when I tried to divide this number by three, I got another nice number which meant that it could be reduced by three. So I went ahead and did that. Um, I'm not able to reduce this fraction in the calculator because it's too, the numbers are too big and it does keep popping out decimals and it won't convert them back to fraction, but they want a fraction in this box. So I had to reduce by hand. From here, this one was a lot harder to recognize. I noticed that the numbers did not end in zero and five. I noticed that the numbers did not both end in evens. So I couldn't divide by fives or twos. Um, so then I started trying to divide by all the other odd numbers, right? Um, mostly just the odd prime numbers. And if I talk about the odd prime numbers really quick, the odd prime numbers, well, just prime numbers in general, but there's only one even prime number. Prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 25, 27, 29, and the list goes on, okay? Um, but what I did was, is I, this is the smaller number. So I took the square root of five, four, zero, five, and I got 73 point something, 
which means I would have to keep going with my prime numbers until I got to 73. And these are all the numbers that I would try to divide into both of these numbers, okay? Um, 29, 31, 35, I think 37 is a prime number, 41, 43, 47, 53, 57, well, no, not 57, 57 can be divided by 3. Fifty nine, sixty one, sixty seven, seventy one, and even seventy three itself. Okay, so these are, I mean, the prime numbers do keep going, but these are the prime numbers up to seventy three. And so what I did was, is I tried to divide this number by two, it did not work, right? So that doesn't end in even, so it's not gonna work. Then I, I got a decimal, so it didn't work. Then I tried three, then I tried five, oops. And I won't know that this cannot be reduced unless I try all of these numbers and none of them work, okay? So this one will be really, really difficult for me to reduce. So I did go ahead and go through all of these numbers and it turns out that 23 went into 5405 evenly. And then it also went into the bottom number evenly. So I went ahead and I divided it by that. And um, once I did that, I took the square root of two, three, five. And I'm using the smaller numbers always just because that will give me lesser values. And I got 15 point something. So what I did was, is I tried to reduce 235 by all of these numbers up to 15. So just these numbers. But whatever number went into 235, it also had to go into the denominator. And so while five goes into 235, um, five did not go into the denominator, okay? So out of all these numbers, five was the only one that worked in the numerator, but it did not work in the denominator. And so that's why I knew that this was the final reduced um, fraction, okay? Um, this doesn't happen a lot. Usually they'll just ask for the decimal, but for some reason, this problem was very persistent on having a fraction as an answer. And it just turned out to be one ugly fraction that I could not use my calculator for. So I definitely wanted to discuss the strategy on how to reduce that. Um, now, number six says a box contains 10 transistors, three of which are defective. If three are selected at random, find the probability of the statements below. Um, and I just wrote a note to myself, if I have 10 transistors, um, that makes three that are defective and seven that are non-defective, okay? So, a, I want to find the probability that all are defective. So I have 10 transistors and I'm going to pick three. The order in which I pick them does not matter here. Um, I want to know the percent, the probability that all are defective, which means that from the three that are defective, I'm choosing three of those. From the seven that are non-defective, I'm choosing none of those. Now, when I type this whole thing in my calculator, it does give me a nice fraction because it's not too large. I get one over 20. For part B, it says that none are defective. So out of the three that are defective, I'm not picking any of those, but out of the seven that are non-defective, I'm picking my three from that group. Um, again, out of the total possibilities, 10 choose three. So I typed in all of this in my calculator and it gave me the fraction, reduced fraction, seven over 24. Now for number seven, it says a city council consists of six Democrats and six Republicans. If a committee of six people is selected, find the probability selecting three Democrats and three Republicans. So if I have three 
Um, no, I have six Democrats and I have six Republicans. And it wants me to find a probability that I'm gonna select three and three. So I'm gonna choose three from the six Democrats and three from the six Republicans over six people that I'm choosing from all 12 of those city councils. Okay, so this is the total, but these are the individual certain criteria, right? So when I typed in this whole fraction in the calculator, it did reduce it for me and give me 100 over 231. Now for number eight, it says, a hand consists of five cards from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. Find the number of possible five card poker hands. B, a heart flush is a five card consisting of all hearts. Find the number of possible heart flushes. C, find the probability of being dealt a heart flush. So what I did first was find the total, right? So you have 52 cards in the deck and you're gonna choose five of those. The order in which they're in your hand does not matter. You're probably gonna move them around in your hand anyway, okay? And that turns out to be this number here. So that will be the denominator when I find my probability. But to find the numerator, we have to find this specific situation. So it says um, a heart flush. So all five of my cards need to be hearts. Now of the 52 deck, I know that there are 13 hearts in there. The ace, one through 10, jack, queen, and king. Or the, J, the ace, two through 10, and then jack, queen, and king. So if I do 52 minus 13, I get with 39 non-hearts, right? So these would be the other three suits. So from the 13 hearts, I, I want to be choosing all five of my cards, right? From the 39 that are non-hearts, I don't want to choose any of those cards. So when I typed in this in my calculator, I got 20, 1287. So if I want to find the probability that I would get a heart flush, it's going to be that probability or that, that possible ways of getting the heart flush over the total possible ways I could get my, my five cards. And when I did this in the calculator, it does give me a decimal because it is a large number. Um, and then it said round to the six decimal places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, this two did not change that five. And so the number ended up being 0 0.000495. Now for number nine, it says, if you were dealt four cards from a shuffled deck of 52 cards, find the probability that all four cards are diamonds. So again, I know that there are 13 diamonds in the deck and there are um, 39 non-diamonds. So I am only being dealt four cards this time, but I want them all to be diamonds. So from the 13, I'm choosing all my four, which means from the 39, I'm choosing none. And then on the total, I have 52 total cards and I'm choosing four cards total. So when I typed all of this in the calculator, these numbers were pretty big. And so it did pop out a decimal, but this time I am allowed to type in a decimal as an answer. And it said round to the sixth place. So the one or the zero was not enough to change the one. So we ended up with that decimal there. And number 10 says, if you are dealt five cards from a shuffled deck of 52 cards, find the probability of getting three queens and two kings. So I know that there are four queens and there are four kings. And if I take those eight cards out of the 52 card deck, I will be left with 44 cards. So of the queens, I want to get three. Of the kings, I want to choose two. And of the remaining cards, I don't want any because I'm only going to be dealt five cards, period. Okay, and there's my five cards. But out of the total, there's a total of 52 cards, and I'm going to pick a total of five cards. So when I type this whole fraction in the calculator, it does pop out this decimal, and I rounded it to the sixth place, and so I ended up with this value here. Now for number 11, it says an apartment complex offers apartments with four different options designated by A through D. There are an equal number of apartments with each combination of options. So A, you have the number of bedrooms, B, the number of bathrooms, C, the floor level, and D, the different views. 
It says, if there is only one apartment left, what is the probability that it is precisely what a person is looking for? Namely, three bedrooms, one bathroom, second floor, and a golf course or lake view. Okay. So out of the total possibilities, okay, I have, I'm going to choose one from here. So four, choose one. I'm going to choose one from here, two, choose one. One from here, two, choose one. And one from here, four, choose one. So I have 64 total possibilities of how these houses could be constructed, okay? Now, the order does not matter because it doesn't matter if it's a first floor, one bedroom, one bathroom with no view, you know, or you can word it in any way you want to. The order does not matter here, which is why I'm using combinations. Now, um, but here I'm looking for specific stuff, okay? So I'm looking for three bedrooms, one bath, I'm looking for a second floor, and then I'm looking for either the golf course view or the lake view, okay? So I put two for D, which is the second item in D, or three for D. Now, there's only one possibility that this could happen and only one possibility that that could happen. So if I could have this or this, then that makes there two total possibilities. So I have two possibilities with what this person's looking for out of the total 64, that does reduce to one over 32. Now, finally, we get to our last problem. It says the Powerball lottery for a certain region is set up so that each player chooses five different numbers from one through 59 and one Powerball number from one through 35. A player wins a jackpot by matching all five numbers in any order from the one to 59 group and matching the Powerball number. So that means out of the 59, um, uh, regular numbers, okay, we're going to choose five. And then out of the 35 Powerball numbers, we're going to choose one. So there's this many comp, uh, possibilities of that lottery pick. Okay. It says, suppose that there is a drawing in which the Powerball lottery jackpot is promised to exceed 50 million. If a purchase, if a person purchases this many tickets at $2 per ticket, all possible combinations. Okay, so basically they didn't pick one ticket and some of them are matching. They picked this number of tickets and they got all different numbers on every single ticket. Um, and because it's the same number, it actually turns out that they are getting all the possible combinations. Um, it says, isn't this a guarantee of winning the jackpot? Because the probability in this situation is one. What's wrong with doing this? Okay. Um, and so, yes, they will win the lottery because if all of their tickets are different, and they purchased every single combination, they are going to win, okay? It's not a matter of whether or not they were going to win. What, it's a, what is the problem is, is are they going to win the jackpot? Are they gonna win this $500 million? No, because the way lotteries work is anyone with any combination of winning numbers can win. Um, and they may not win the, the, the whole amount, um, but they will win a partial of that whole amount. So depending on how many winners there are, if I have a bunch of people who are winning like 250 bucks, and then I got a few people winning a few thousand, and then maybe there was, you weren't the only one that got the jackpot. Maybe there was another person that got the jackpot. Well, now you have to share that jackpot with the other winner. Okay, so um, the probability is one. So this is definitely not the option. Um, and it says it isn't realistically possible to buy all those tickets. That's not true either. There are people that have more than this amount of money. Now, if you're going to spend, uh, what is that? One seven times $2. You're spending this much minus 5 million. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two. You're really only making, I mean, you're still making money. You're still making 
149 million. Okay. So you basically have to be a millionaire already to win more millions. Okay. Um, but it is possible. It's just pretty difficult to do. Um, so yeah. And then, and then you're not even guaranteed to win the whole 500 million. So who's to say that that's the amount of profit that you're going to make, right? What if you have to share it and it gets split in half? You probably don't even make your money back if you were crazy enough to do that. Um, so it isn't realistically possible to buy. I mean, you could buy them. That is realistic to buy them. There are people that have that amount of money to buy them, but it doesn't mean they're going to actually profit from this situation. Um, and then D, there's nothing wrong with doing this. I mean, there's not technically nothing wrong. You're just not guaranteed to win the whole $50 million. Okay. So that is the end of this section. Um, in the next part of the video, we're gonna be moving into pure statistics. So we were starting to talk about some probabilities. That is like the very beginning of statistics. Um, and now we're gonna get into statistics, but the next chapter is quite a bit different from this one. There's no more permutations and combinations involved. Uh, most of the data will be given to us in charts, graphs, lists, things like that, okay? But I will see you guys in the next video.